Next pattern, this is the dowel back. This, the dowel back, if you want to tie it, you can tie it with all sorts of different color threads. Again, uh, I prefer to tie it using uh, that hot head on it. So once again, I'm going to start up by the head. And I'm going to wrap thread all the way back to the back. The key with this is that it's going to make the pattern far more durable. It's not going to slip. You've got a better foundation for everything to stick onto it. So I'm going to wrap the thread all the way back towards the bend of the hook again. This pattern, you don't want to go beyond the bend because you want to have more of that sort of flat profile to it. It's not really a curved pattern. Uh, next thing I'm going to add to this will be a pheasant tail. You can use uh, you can use hen hackle too, but I just think that this one here is, is a bit stiffer and it actually shows up a bit better in the water. So trying to curve it so it's going to go slightly upwards, it's not that important, but trying to place it on so the tips are, are kind of pointing upwards if anything, but definitely not down. I'm going to trim off the, uh, the pheasant tail, but I'm going to try to leave it so it's going to add a bit of bulk to the body and just wrap it down, secure it up towards where the thorax would be. And again, bring the thread back towards the bend of the hook, and that flares that up quite nicely. Uh, for the ribbing on this, I'm just going to use your standard red holographic tinsel. If you guys uh, use this or not, or you've never seen it, it's very common. It's just a different color of ribbing to use on the body. You can use just plain pearl mylar on these, or you can even use just wire ribbing. But to try and add something with the red with a bit of holographic, it just makes it that much more visible to the fish. And if you are tying with a, a vise, if you've, if you've never used a, a rotary vise and someone offers the loan you want to use once or twice, say no because you won't want to go back to your standard vise. So, uh, in, in order to save a bit of time with the body, usually I'll wrap it with maybe one or two strands, just a, a peacock curl, but I'm going to put three on at a time here and it's not really going to matter how much you put on it. It'll just sort of speed the process up of getting the body built up a bit quicker. And bring your thread up towards the uh, eye and then just half hitch it again. Whenever I tie patterns, I always use a half hitch just because I hate to see everything start to come undone. At least if it does or I break the thread with the uh, scissors, I can just start off where I left and uh, the half hitch will hold it in place. So tying it in with the tip of the peacock curl, which is a bit thinner and tapered. As you come forward, you'll find that the thicker hurl actually uh, gives it that natural taper to the body that you're trying to achieve. And at this point I'll just tie it off and then cut the uh, excess off here and just put a half hitch because in my case I'm going to use the rotary to speed it up. Now what you can do is spin it in the opposite way that you weaved it on so that way you're uh, your holographic or your tinsel isn't going to be buried inside of the fibers and not quite as visible. So you don't need a lot, maybe five, five wraps to get it back up towards the eye. And even though, keep in mind when you're uh, tying this pattern out in the natural light, if you've got an aught light it's great because it gives you an idea of what the natural light would look like, but if you're fishing this in the water that little bit of red, that hint in there really shows up quite dramatically for the fish. And whenever I tie any pattern, it doesn't matter what type it is, if it's, if it's a nymph, it's very rare that I don't put some sort of segmentation in it because uh, I think that's key for the, the fish to uh, be a little more attracted to it. Now this pattern, the way I'm going to tie this is, is slightly different. I'm just going to figure out the length I want for the, uh, the legs to hang underneath for the throat. And then I'm going to flip it over onto the back. And I'm actually going to tie it back towards where the thorax should be and then bring it back forward and then I'm going to pull the top over it. I'm just, just going to basically make a little bit of a, a wing case butt on the back and then lift that up and cut this off. You can, uh, you can adapt this pattern by putting a flashback material on the back if you want to. Now the bit of the trick with this is trying to get it around the eye and underneath so that it's somewhat even. So you try to push three five fibers on each side, bring it down, and then build up a bit of a head on it. You don't want a huge, huge head or a very long head, just a nice nice sort of size on it. Um, one thing with a pattern like this, if you're ever tying them, I'm sure you've all seen this trick anyways, but for those that don't, put a bit of glue on, on the thread itself. 
That way when you do the whip finish, you don't have to worry about putting glue on there and you know that it's going to actually penetrate through it. If you're tying small patterns too, sometimes the whip finish tools will be a bit easier for you than this is here. But what, as you can see what's happened here is I've got that glue under each wrap. I'm not worried about the fact that I have to put glue on it. In some cases you don't want glue around the tip because you don't want to get it on the fibers. So there you have that pattern. There's very, very simple to tie. It's not a whole lot different than the halfbacks or the fullbacks that we've been tying for years. But in the case of this, having a little bit of a red on the tail for the butt and on the head and then the ribbing, and it makes it a very effective pattern. Plus the sort of the, the effect of uh, peacock curl makes them show up very well in the water.